peace. This came over black supremacy. I want to do this particular video. I want to call it a black comedic god would never debate his Hebrew slave. This is a fact. The black comedic god would never debate their Hebrew slave. The Hebrews are so animate on how they were enslaved by the Egyptians which we call the Commissions. However, this slavery was ordained by Yah, according to their book. So that doesn't make the Egyptian or Kemetic people negative, because their God ordained slavery under the Kemetic people, the Kemetic kings, the pharaohs. Their God ordained that. Their Bible also condones slavery. Certain chapters. Let me read a scripture that shows how your God, Yahweh, condones slavery in the Bible. Let's go to Leviticus 25, 44-46. However, you may purchase a male or female slave's from among the foreigners who live among you. You may also purchase the children of such resident foreigners, including those who have been born in your land. You may treat them as your property, passing them on to your children as a permanent inheritance. You may treat your slaves like this, but the people of Israel, your relatives, must never be treated this way. So the Bible condoned slavery. I just read that to you. But what about slavery for the Hebrews? Because it gave a unique prescription there that I just read. And it said, don't treat the Hebrews like this. So let's read one pertaining to the Hebrews. Because your God, Yah, condones slavery. Permits it, makes rules and regulations. The first Jim Crow laws come from the Bible. Let's go to Exodus 21, 2 through 6. The prescription for having a Hebrew slave. If you buy a Hebrew slave, he is to serve for only six years. Set him free in the seventh year, and he will owe you nothing for his freedom. If he was single when he became your slave and then married afterwards, only he will go free in the seventh year. But if he was married before he became a slave, then his wife will be freed with him. If the master gave him a wife while he was a slave and they had sons or daughters, then the man will be freed in the seventh year, but his wife and children will still belong to his master. But the slave may plainly declare, I love my master, my wife, and my children, and I would rather not go free. If he does this, his master must present him before God. Then his master must take him to the door and publicly pierce his ear with an awl. After that, the slave will belong to his master forever. That was Exodus 21, 2 through 6. So Yahweh condoned Hebrew slavery. He condoned putting the Hebrews in slaves. What we are calling the Hebrew people today, they identify with slavery. They identify themselves as the slaves. Those of us who call ourselves Kemetic, Commissions, we identify ourselves with the ancient Kemites, the Nubians, the royal people, the rulers. A comedic God would never debate with their slave. It wouldn't make any sense. Now these so-called black Hebrews or African Americans or Afro-Caribbean individuals or Native Americans or what you may have, Hispanic, they call themselves Hebrews, have a choice of whether they want to be identified in that particular manner. It's up to them. 
if they want to be considered slaves. If they want to be identified with the Hebrews, with the, with the suffering and it, with that biblical story, that paradigm. If they want to identify with that narrative as their identity, that's completely up to them. Their consciousness can create that reality and they can attach themselves to that. But I just want to show you how whimsical it is. You see these brothers, ISPUK or ISUPK, uh, you see GOCC and you see GMS and other schools of thoughts out on the corner preaching the word of Yah, trying to get followers and recruit and try to get people to join their organizations. But if you notice, you never see them out on the corner giving DNA tests to find out if these individuals are of a particular lineage. They're not giving out DNA tests. They're going off of how Americanized you are, how much you speak English. And if you look black, you have a Caribbean accent, or I guess you look Hispanic or sound Hispanic, or Native American, they, they're going off of that. They're not giving out genetic tests to determine are you really of some particular Hebrew tribe. So it's really whoever wants to identify with that um, struggling paradigm. Anybody who want to identify and take on that negative identity, they can. There's no genetic tests or anything like that. If you just walk up to them, and they, they're going to say, you're a Hebrew, you're the, you're, you're the chosen people of God. They didn't give you a DNA test. They just brought you on into the group, into the fold, and said, you know, you're with us. They don't care how pale you look, white, mulatto, you know, they don't care if you look mixed or you might not, you, you might not even look, you, you may be black, a black American, but you might have total African features. You might look Nigerian or, or Hausa or Igbo or of, of one of the African tribes, the Fulani. You may look uh, of any African nation, but they don't, they're not going to do a genetic test to determine whether you are a, a, a true a uh, full-blooded African-American because what the hell is that? Because the, Afri the so-called Afro-Americans, according to them, are supposed to be the ones that are supposed to go through 400 years of slavery, that the, the Bible is supposed to prophesy of the voyage and the journey of the so-called Africans in America. But they're not doing a genetic test to, to, to tell that are, are you a, a full-blooded African-American because if they did, how could you do that anyway? Because we've all been mixed in with the, with the devil. You know, a lot of us over here, there's no such thing as a pure African American. So you've got some Africans that came from Africa, but they grew up in, in, with an American household. They may have one African American parent, or they just grew up and had African American influence. They may have been adopted. They don't know their lineage, their background, their history, what tribe they're from. But when they walk up to these Hebrew Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites is going to say, you're my brother for 400 years of slavery. We've been prophesied. You're the tribe of Judah, the lost tribe of Israel. You're a true Israelite. That's garbage. A comedic God, a comedic deity, a comedic consciousness entity or being would never argue with their Hebrew slaves. People say, oh, you're talking, you're, you're, you're proud about slavery or taking the Hebrews into slavery. Yah their God has ordained that. Their God is, is, is put them into slavery, sent them into the wilderness. Their God allowed them to go into slavery. So why should the comedic people feel bad according to their Bible? Now, I'm telling you that the book is based on mythology and myth anyway. It's a bedtime story. But if you want to believe it, I'm telling you aspects in it where their God is saying, ordain these things. Their God has prophesied these things and put these things into place. So we should not feel bad about being comedic masters of the Hebrew slaves. And if we are true comedics, then it's, it's no reason. We're the true Kemite gods and deities and pharaohs. Why are we arguing with our Hebrew slaves? Let me just take time out and, and mention another scripture about slavery. I think the last one I read was Exodus uh, 21, 7 through 11. Um, let's read another one. No, that was Exodus 21, 2 through 6. And notice how they can get the male Hebrew slave to become a permanent slave by keeping his wife and children hostage until he says he wants to become a permanent slave. Look at the family values. God ordained this. This is in the Bible, the Torah. They're talking about selling sex slaves in the Bible. This is their God. Their God has said this, that, it's, that this, this is permissible. 
in the Bible. So while they're talking about what went on in Egypt and homosexuality and all these things that went in Egypt, look what's actually going on in the Bible. The Bible is condoning slavery. Okay, and now it's going to talk about how you can sell your own daughter at Exodus 21, 7 through 11. Let me read that. When a man sells his daughter as a slave, she will not be freed at the end of the sixth year, as the men are. If she does not please the man who brought her, he may allow her to be brought back again, but he's not allowed to sell her to foreigners. Since he is the one who broke the contract with her, and if the slave girl owner if the slave girl's owner arranges for her to marry his son he may no longer treat her as a slave girl but he must treat her as his daughter if he himself marries her and takes another wife See, clearly they're talking about polygamy or something of that nature he may not reduce her food or clothing or fail to sleep with her as his wife if he fails in any of these three ways she may leave as a free woman without making any payment this is Exodus 21, 7 through 11. So as we, as we read this, you know, it says that, he may, you know, when a man sells his daughter as a slave, she will not be freed at the end of the six years as the men are. If she does not please the man whom brought her. Is that sex slavery in the Bible? This is in the Bible. That's Exodus 21, 7, 21, 7 through 11. So your Bible, these are the values in the Bible while they talk about what's going on in Kemet and Egypt. You know, what's going on in the Bible here? So these are the Bible's family values. A man can buy as many sex slaves as he wants as long as he feeds them, clothes them, and screws them. What does the Bible say about beating, them, beating, beating slaves? It says you can beat both male and female slaves with a rod so hard that as long as they don't die right away, you are cleared of any wrongdoing. So Yah told the commissions and, and, and that they could beat their slaves. The Egyptians, you can beat your slaves. You know, so we already have a right to beat them in any debate and beat them in any way because Yah has permitted the commissions, according to their book, to beat our slaves. When a man strikes his male or female slave with a rod so hard that the slave dies under his hand, he shall be punished. So you can't kill him, but we can beat the, we can beat the hell out of him which I, 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 I'm very much pushing for the comedic community to do to the Hebrew Israelites on February 28th, that they beat the hell out of, the, out of these Hebrews, as it has been permitted in the Bible. If, however, the slave survives for a day or two, he is not to be punished since the slave is his own property. That's Exodus 21.20. You would think that Jesus and the New Testament would have a different view of slavery. But still, but slavery still is approved in the New Testament, and the following passage will show you that. Your God condones slavery. Why are the committed gods debating with their Hebrew slaves? If you want to be a Hebrew slave, that's your option. If you want to be a slave, if you want to, you're under God in that sense. You identify with that narrative where you're under uh, Yahweh and you've got to be a slave for 400 years. The committed people are just doing their jobs. It's, doing what, it's divinely written. It's prophesied, just like you say. Let's go to the New Testament. Jesus says, Ephesians 6, 5, Slave, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely as you would serve Christ. So you got to serve your master as they are Christ. You must look at your master as Christ according to the Bible. Yeah, Mr. Hebrew is like. Yeah, Mr. Christian. You have to serve your master as Christ. You have to serve the comedic gods and deities, the comedic pharaohs, as Christ. They're your masters, according to the Bible. 1 Timothy 6, 1 through 2. Christians who are slaves should give their masters full respect so that the name of God and his teachings will not be shamed. If your master is a Christian, there is no excuse for being disrespectful. You should work all the harder because you are helping another believer by your effort. Teach these truths. Timothy encourages everyone to obey them. So, you can be a slave to a master who is not a Christian. He, can, he don't have to be a Christian or a Hebrew. Your master can be a commission, a Kimite. 1 Timothy 6.1 
through two, they made a, a specific pre prescription that your master don't have to be a Christian. Wow. Read it for yourself. In the following, Jesus clearly approves of the beating of slaves, even if they don't know what they were, that they were doing anything wrong. This is the God of your Bible. This is Jesus. This is Yeshua. The servant will be severely punished. And I'm at Luke 12, 47 through 48. The servant will be severely punished. For though he knew his duty and he refused to do it. But people who are not aware that they are doing wrong will be punished only lightly. Much is required from those who much is given and much more is required from those who much more is given. That's in Luke 12, 47 through 48. The servant will be severely punished for though he knew his duty and refused to do it. So I, I say all this to say that there was nothing wrong with slavery in Egypt or Kemet. Because the Bible says so. The Bible is saying so. The Torah is saying this as a fact. So stop talking about we was slaves under the Egyptians. You should be mad at your God for that. You should be mad at Yahweh for that. Because Yahweh, according to your Bible, literally, I guess he blessed the Egyptians with Hebrew slaves. They were blessed with Hebrew slaves. Yah hooked that thing up for them and allowed them to be able to do it like that and, and, and made laws and regulations. So a comedic God has no reason to debate with his Hebrew slaves. None of the comedics today, none of the incarnations and manifestations of the pharaohs, of the deities, none of those in alignment with comedic consciousness, none of those in alignment with the Nile Valley consciousness, none of them, okay, not one of them, have to debate with the Hebrew slaves. This is King Noble. Join my website, www.kingnobleblackrulership.com.